At this point, we've introduced how to create color styles and how to add them to an animation. And now let's take a closer look at the settings for the fill tool. These settings can help a lot with efficiency, especially if you've got a more complicated drawing with lots of separate areas to fill. <clears throat> so I've got an example file here with Thundercluck flapping his wings, and it is mostly colored in except for this last drawing, which is incomplete. So let's tap F to switch over to our fill tool, and let's take a look at these tool settings up at the top of the screen. First up, we've got type. Uh, normal, as we've seen before, means that one click gives us one fill. So I'm going to switch to my gold fill style here, and with the type as normal, if I click once within the neck, then we get that single area filled in. If we want to check out the other options here, just like the select tool, we've got options for rectangular, freehand, and polyline. I'm going to switch to rectangular, and what this will let me do is fill in multiple areas within a selected range. So if I click and drag a marquee around this blank wing, then I can fill in all those shapes at once, saving a little bit of time. I'm going to undo that and make a special note here. Uh, be sure if you're taking this approach that your marquee fully encompasses all the shapes that you want to fill in. So this gives us a successful fill, but if I undo again and just click and drag within the shapes, I'm not going to get any result that way. So again, uh, make sure that your marquee fully encompasses the shapes that you want to fill if you're taking this approach. Okay, so that's type. I'm going to set that back to normal, and next up, mode is set to areas by default, and as we've seen so far, that means our fill tool works within the areas contained within our lines. Uh, we can change that to fill in the lines themselves, or to fill in both lines and areas. What I'm going to do is set this to lines, and notice I've got a slightly lighter color for the detail lines within the wings. I'm going to switch to that wing detail line style, and then with my type set to normal, I can click once to fill in lines one at a time, or I can change my type to one of the other options and get multiple lines at once. Alright, so I'm going to set mode back to areas as it was by default, and next let's take a look at this selective option. If this is unchecked, then we can fill in any area, whether it currently has a fill or not. But if it's checked, then our fill tool only affects areas that are not currently filled in. So on Thundercluck right now, the only areas left to fill are the waddles and the comb. It might look like the horns and the eye whites are still blank. Uh, technically they have this slightly off-white fill already applied. So the waddles and the comb are left to fill. I'm going to switch to my red fill style and with selective checked and my type rectangular, I can do a marquee selection around the entire character, and only those empty areas are going to be affected by that. Uh, by contrast, if selective were not checked and I were to do that same rectangular selection, it would recolor the entire character, which is not what we want. So let's undo that. And this selective setting is especially useful when you're finishing up a coloring job and you've only got one style left to apply to multiple areas. For the onion skin setting, I'm going to revert back to not having any fills on this current drawing. And as I've said before, I'm not the biggest fan of having onion skin on, but I'll use it here for demonstration purposes. So now we can see a faint image of a previous drawing that's already colored in. And if we check onion skin, it can save us a little bit of time for switching between fill styles without having to click down in the palette, because uh, anywhere an area on our current drawing overlaps with an area on that previous drawing that has the fill color we want, then we can click on that overlap. And even though I don't currently have gold fill as my selected style, when I click on that overlap, it will auto-select that style to fill this area on our current level. So here where the wing is overlapping with some gold, I can click to fill that. Where the tail is overlapping, where the leg is overlapping, uh, these are all filling in with gold. And then if I click on the torso, where it's overlapping with the previous drawing's torso, then I'll get the brown there automatically without having to select it in the palette. And then we can go back to gold, so on and so forth. <clears throat> to be completely honest, I don't use this setting all that often. Uh, for my taste, it adds a lot of visual clutter without adding that much more efficiency. But if you're curious what it does, there it is. And in case you find it useful, it's one more tool at your disposal. <clears throat> the frame range setting is really useful once you get it working, but it can be a bit temperamental. So I'm going to show it working well first, and then I'll point out a few things to be aware of. 
So here I've got this example file with a bird sliding across the screen and coming to a stop. And to use the frame range fill, I'm going to stop playback, navigate to my first frame, make sure that my fill style is selected, and then I'll tap F to use my fill tool. And let's go ahead and check frame range. And with this checked, if I click inside the character where I want to fill, I'm not going to get a fill right away. Instead, I'm going to get an indicator for the start point of our frame range fill. Now if I navigate forward in the animation to about the end of that sliding motion and then click within the character again, now we're going to get a fill across that whole range of motion. So that is the frame range fill working well. Again, instead of one click for one fill, you click at the start point for a range of motion and then the end point for the range of motion. And if things are working well, the fill applies to the character all the way along. So again, that's what the setting can do. But a couple things to point out. Uh, for one thing, note over here in the X sheet, as we're looking at the numbers in our cells over here, uh, notice that they're going down in numerical order. And that is actually not the way that the cells were numbered when I first made this animation. That's something I had to apply manually uh, to make the frame range fill work. <clears throat> If we revert back to a previous version of this file, note that the motion is the same, but if we check the numbers in the X sheet over here, they're a little bit jumbled up. So just to clarify what these mean, the numbers on the left of the X sheet are the frame numbers of the animation. Uh, the numbers on the cells are the order in which I drew them, and that's the order that they're numbered in the level. So what this means is I first drew this first frame of the animation, and then I drew this last frame of the animation, and then I drew this in between, and so on. So these numbers are the order in which the cells were drawn, and if that doesn't match the playback order, it doesn't cause any problems for how the animation shows up. You can see here it's going just fine. But it does cause problems if we try to use the frame range fill option. So here just to demonstrate that, I'm going to go back to my first frame of the animation, got my fill tool selected, and I'm going to check frame range, and just like I did before, I'm going to click within the character here at the start of the motion and then navigate forward through my frames to the end of that motion. And if I try to click again, this time it only filled that first frame and that last frame. So this was not a successful use of this setting. <clears throat> to make that work, I'm going to undo here and then we need to renumber our drawings so that these numbers are in order. To do that, I'm going to click on my first cell here, then hold shift and click at the end to select all of my cells, and then I'm going to right-click on that selection and choose Auto Renumber about a third of the way down the list. So you might have seen a little pop over here in the level strip as these drawings are being renumbered, and now our drawing numbers are ordered based on their playback arrangement. So now that I've made that change, once again with feeling, I'm going to try to use this frame range fill. We'll start at the first frame of this motion, set that start point there, and then I'll navigate forward to the end of that motion. And this time, I got that successful fill again. Okay, so again, make sure that your frames are numbered in order over in the X sheet. The other thing to keep in mind with the frame range setting is that it works best if the character is either static or moving at a steady speed, but it doesn't work as well if there's a change in speed or direction. Uh, so here, at the end of the slide when the character slows down, notice that it's no longer moving forward. It's going to work best if I fill this in as a separate frame range from that initial slide. If I were to try to go from the very start here to the very end here, that change in speed would throw things off. But instead, if I treat this as one frame range to fill in, and then treat this as a second frame range, <clears throat> then ultimately I'll have the entire sequence filled in. <clears throat> Finally, maximum gap will determine how much of a break you can have in your lines and still have the fill tool work. So to demonstrate that, here I've got a drawing of Baby Thundercluck, and I have intentionally left just a tiny little gap in the lines over the wing in this area. So if we zoom back out, I'm going to use my fill tool, and to demonstrate, if I take maximum gap and set it all the way down, the lowest it'll go is 0.01 then that tiny little gap is going to prevent the fill tool from working. But if we set the max gap back up a bit, I believe 1.15 is the default there. Then if I try to use the fill tool again, uh, success. 
I wouldn't necessarily rely on this. Uh, generally, try to keep your lines as clean as possible, but it can be useful to know it's there. Uh, also, a little bit of trivia, after a fill has been applied, if it's relying on maximum gap, if you bring max gap back down, sometimes you can lose your fill after the fact. So be careful with that. And with that in mind, if you're aware of a gap in your lines, my recommendation is to use the control point editor to clean them up and that should keep your fills more stable. <clears throat> that max gap setting will come into play in our next section on color troubleshooting. This is going to include a lot that I wish I had known earlier on, and I hope that you find it helpful. That's coming up next. I hope you find these videos helpful, and if so, subscribe for more tutorials, and check out thundercluck.com, especially if you have any young readers or fans of animation in your life. Thanks for watching.